So first of all, starting on page 410, section 8.1, we're going to talk about what a sequence is first. I'm going to give you a couple. It's going to ask you to tell me the first like five or six terms. Uh, and then also today you're going to have to come up with and write the next one and write the rule, what you think. Basically, a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. Okay, it's a pattern. Okay, a finite one would be where it stops. An infinite one would be where it continues to go on forever. I'll show you the difference between those two here in a second, where you'll see a finite one and you'll see an infinite one. Also, each individual number is listed as a term. So if I say the second or third term, I'm talking about the second or the third number. Okay, so when you see that type of situation. So here's what they're going to have for you. It's going to say something like a sub n equals 2n plus 5, and they want you to find the first six terms. So what they're asking you to do is you're going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in for n, and let's see what we get. So a sub 1 would mean I'm putting 1 in for n. What's 2 times 1 plus 5? 7. Good. Now I'm going to put 2 in there. What's 2 times 2 plus 5? 9. A sub 3. What's 2 times 3 plus 5? 11. Now, I think you already see the pattern, but they're going to ask you to do the first six terms. On the first half of your assignment, this is what you're going to do. Plug in the numbers and see what you get. Are you okay with that? What if they give you one like this where it says f of n, or n, not x, f of n equals negative 3 n minus 1. And again, they're going to want you to find the first six terms. So what you do is, first one up, I put a 1 in there. Negative 3, 1 minus 1. So what do you do first? How do you solve this one? Do the exponent first, right? What's 1 minus 1? 0. Then, if you are unsure of what happens here, could you type that in your calculator to get the answer? Yeah. Negative 3 to the 0 power, does anybody know what it is? Yeah. Okay, now careful. I've heard some people say negative 1, and i heard some people say positive 1. The thing is in parentheses. The rule is anything to the 0 power is always 1. It's how you typed it in makes a difference. Okay, now Savannah, you originally said negative 1, then you changed it because you, whatever. If it's in parentheses, if you went like this, it should have gave you a negative 1. But if you put it like this... It should give you a positive one because that's saying anything to the zero power is always one. But on the, on the top one, it's saying three to the zero is one, but then there's a minus sign after. So then it would be a minus one. So be very careful how you type it in. If it's in parentheses, keep it in parentheses. Then f of two. What's two minus one? One. What's negative 3 to the first power? Negative 3, and done. F of 3. Negative 3, 3 minus 1. What's 3 minus 1? 2. Two. What's negative 3 squared? 9. Now again, here's where you got to be careful. Is it in parentheses? Yes. So it's saying negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Now, again, I only went to three terms. It's going to ask you to do six. You just keep going. Are you guys comfortable with this so far? That's half of your assignment today is just doing that, plugging in the numbers and seeing what you get. Can you handle that? Pretty easy, huh? All right, now, from there, it's going to give you something like this, where it's going to say negative 1, negative 8, negative 27, negative 64, dot, dot, dot. When you see the three dots at the end, 
that is what they call an infinite sequence because of the fact that it goes on forever in that pattern. When you see the three dots at the end, it goes on forever in that pattern. Does that make sense? That's what they mean by infinite. Infinite is short for infinity, right? Meaning forever. Now, what they're going to ask you to do is they're going to ask you to describe the pattern. What's happening? What do you see? Besides seeing numbers, that's obvious. They're going down. Okay, that's one observation. What else? Draw negative. Okay, another good observation. What else? Close. Something with tripling. What's one to the third power? What's two to the third power? Eight. What's three to the third power? 27. What's four to the third power? 64. That's how they're generating the number. All they're doing is taking the counting numbers and they're raising them to the power of three. So that's describing the pattern, all those things. Like what Amanda was saying, that they keep going down or they're all negative, that's an observation. That's great. That's part of it. The other thing is, is that we're cubing the number. And that's another observation that we made. Write the next term. So what would the next one be? What's 5 to the third? But should be a negative 125. Exactly. Then it's going to say write the rule. And this is the part that a lot of people get in trouble with. Now, there isn't a right or wrong answer. There isn't a right or wrong answer for this. But as far as coming up with the rule, this is going to be your hardest part today. Now, going off of what we said as far as it wasn't doubling, it was tripling, or it was multiplying it to the third power, if you noticed, all the numbers were negative too. And that was one of the observations that Amanda made. So the negative is going to go on the outside so that that way it stays negative. If you put a negative on the inside, then it alternates the signs like we had on the last one. What letter would you like to use? Huh? A, N, X, whatever, right? A lot of these types, what they use, they use N more than they use anything else. A lot of times for number. And what were we raising it to? The third. That's the rule. What that means is, is that I can put in any number now, and if I wanted to say, what's the tenth term, I put ten in for n and see what I get. So what's ten to the third power? A thousand, right? Because it's three zeros. And then there's a negative in front of that, so negative 1,000 would be the tenth term. That's how they generate it. This is going to be the hardest part for you today is coming up with the patterns rule. As far as writing down observations, tell me what you see. Okay? Amanda saw that they're all negative. Amanda saw that they're going down. Tamara was on the right track when they thought they were doubling, but maybe it wasn't. It was something else that had to be tripling or raising it to the third power. They do that a lot. They might square a number. They might multiply the number all by a certain thing. They might divide it by a certain thing. They might add something to it. You have to figure out the pattern. That's the trick. And that's how you write the rule. So, what if... What if I gave you that pattern? Hey, what's happening? It's going up by twos. What else? They're odds. Are they all the odds, though? No. Because remember, we can have negative odds, too, and those aren't included. It starts at three. Does this ever stop, though? How did you know it was infinite? Three dots at the end, absolutely. 
So now from here, what's the next term? 11. 11. Now, I didn't write down all your observations that you guys had, but I heard real good ones. I heard that they're all odds. I also heard that they're going up by 2 every time. Okay? That's how the pattern's going to work. Now, what you need to do is you need to figure out how do I generate a formula that will work every time? Because that's the issue. Here's what most people do. Most people say something like n plus 2. That's how most people start out with that. That's not right. Here's why. If you put 1 in there, what do you get? That works, right? But now what happens when you put 2 in there? You get 4. 4 is not a list. It's not on your pattern. So it doesn't work. So you have to try again. But it's something with the number 2. When you guys said you went up by 2, that's, this is how you generate the odd numbers. And typically speaking, depending on which number we start with, because we're starting at 3, we're not going to subtract one. We're going to add one. And going up by 2 every time means that we're going to have a 2n plus 1. So does this generate the entire list? Does it work? As soon as you try it for like the first three, and if it keeps working every time, it's got to be the pattern. Does it say two times n plus 1. So what's 2 times 1? 2 plus 1, which is the first number. What's 2 times 2? 4 plus 1, which is the second number. What's 2 times 3? Plus 1. Is it working? Yep. So as far as the last half of your assignment, what they're going to ask you to do is describe what's happening, which you just write down a few words that's describing it. Then the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to come up with the next term. And then the third thing you got to do is make a rule. Now, as long as your rule works, it's right. So, for instance, Kylie could have something different than Tamara, but they both might be right. As long as their pattern works, okay? It's got to work for the ones that they've given you for sure. Are you guys okay with it? At least for the first page. So, when you take a look at page 414, on 5 through 14, it says write the first six terms of the sequence. So again, you're just writing the first six terms. Plug in 1 through 6, see what you get, write them down. Then on 15 through 26, it says describe the pattern. Write the next term, write the rule for the nth term of the sequence, just like what we did here. Now, the only thing I didn't write on the screen was I did not write down what you guys noticed. Like you guys noticed they were all odds and they were going up by two, that kind of thing. I didn't write that down, but that's what you would do for the first part. What do you think? So, on page 414 to 415, 6 through 24, multiples of 3, and 29. And if you forgot what that means, multiples of 3, hey, here's my pattern. 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, what am I doing? Going up by 3. Whoa. Wow. Okay.